I love being up here. I love getting to be at Who Knew Nash. And the next speaker is a friend of mine, uh, someone who's a friend of our radio station. We've actually been playing him on the radio since longer than I've even worked there. And I started there a long time ago, 1997. Uh, he has produced, written, and co-written albums and songs that have sold in excess of 30 million copies. That, I don't know if, if we're going to hear things like that as, as the future rolls on. He made his pro professional debut in 1995 as the singer and songwriter for Better Than Ezra. Their debut record, Deluxe, went double platinum. He's also a songwriter, and he's had some major success. Uh, he had his a number one in 2005 with Howie Days Collide. And then in 2010, he had Sugarland's number one country hit, Stuck Like Glue. I think we all have heard that song. And it became the 11th most downloaded country music song of all time. So he knows how to write some great songs. He lives here in Franklin, Tennessee. He's one of the founding partners of the Pilgrimage Music Festival. Please give it up. It's our first true working musician speaking at Who Knew for Kevin Griffin. Thank you, Lieutenant Dan. Does this move up at all? It's so good to be here this evening. Uh, Third and Lindsley is a place that I've uh, rocked many times in the past, but tonight I don't have a guitar. I have a podium and a microphone. I want to talk tonight about um, creativity. Um, in particular, um, how do you stay inspired? How do you stay relevant? Um, how do you stay competitive? That's something I ask myself all the time as a songwriter. I've been doing it 20 plus years. You know, I, I just like everybody, are there any songwriters out there? Yes, okay. All right, so, so creativity is something I'm, I'm really interested in. You know, Pablo Picasso says uh, that we're all born artists. That the, the problem is how do you grow into your art, artistry as you grow up? You know, there's so many things that get placed in front of you as a creative person in this business. You know, we're in a business of no, so how do you stay, how do you keep your head up, how do you stay inspired? And this is a question that, you know, I've started getting asked now as an elder statesman of 90s rock and uh, songwriting. Uh, and, and I realize there, there are actually some things that I do on a daily basis. There's actually five tools, if you will, not to sound like a... And, uh, Tony, Tony Robbins or anything like that. Um, but in order for me to tell you about that, it's useful if I go back in time, back to 1988 when Better Than Ezra got together at Louisiana State University. We're, in, we're all SCC brothers right now, so give it up for the SEC. Anyhow, so, so Better Than Ezra started from humble beginnings. Fast forward seven years to 1995. Um, Better Than Ezra got signed. We had a platinum album with Good. We, we toured the world. Um, a couple of gold records uh, later, platinum records. And then in 2000, Better Than Ezra was dropped. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it was a low point. Suddenly from, you know, everything you work for is gone in, a, in, in short order. But this is really when I f got my first tool, if you will, um, that's helped me stay creative and inspired. Um, and that tool came from none other than Meatloaf. Give it up for Meat Love, Bat Out of Hell. I was working at a studio called Conway Studios in Los Angeles, and on one side, Justin Timberlake was doing the Justified record. Better Than Ezra was in the center studio, and in the right studio was uh, Meat, as he's affectionately called. And in, in, in short order, um, his manager, Alan Kovac, who manages the Bee Gees and Blondie and other, and Motley Crue, um, asked me to come back, because Meat had heard one of our songs. So I went back there, hung out with uh, Meat Loaf. I, I imagine my, my memory has embellished it with their, their smoke and chiffon and, and tapestries. But, but I wrote a song with him, and that was my first time that I'd collaborated with anybody, because I was always a lone wolf writer. And, and that opened my, my eyes to the first thing that's served me in a 20 plus year career, and that's collaboration. You know, the ability to surround yourself with people that bring something to the table. And songwriting for me, you know, I'm mainly a, a top line uh, melody lyric guy. I bring in somebody who's a great track person or somebody who, to help me with a lyric and I surround myself with those people and it's allow me to continue having hits. And if you look at all the people in the business, Max Martin, um, uh, Dr. Luke, it, back, back to the Brill building days, it's about the ability to surround yourself with creative people. Collaboration is the key to success in this business. 
The second tool um, that I do on a daily basis, I call it, I call it filling the well. I like to think of creativity as this kind of finite resource, this this thing that, you know, you, you grow up listening to music, you get inspired, you're putting things into this well, and as you write songs, you're drawing upon those reserves. And I don't think it's any uh, coincidence that a lot of people write that first great album, and then suddenly the, the rest of them kind of suck, you know, because because so many people have that well that they've drawn upon. And I determined... You know, back then, when, when I'd gotten dropped, I was going to, on a daily basis, continue to be inspired. I'm like a voracious consumer of music. My Spotify playlist is nuts. Um, I read Media Base every day, the trade journals. And, it just, and it's not just about music. Anybody in a competitive field, whether you're an app developer in Silicon Valley, you know, you have to stay, you gotta know what your competition is doing. It's amazing to me how many people I write with and they kind of wear this as a badge of honor. Man, I don't know what's on the charts right now. I'm like, really, you don't? You don't know what you're competing with. How are you gonna compete? How are you gonna get cuts if you don't know what you're competing with? I know in real time on Media Base where my songs are. You you know, it keeps me, it keeps me, it, it keeps me relevant. Um, the third thing that I use, man, that thing is counting down really fast. Uh, the third thing I do, I call it changing my attitude. And I don't mean it like you need to change your attitude like a coach would tell you back in football. I, I use it um, in the aviation sense. And ad, sense, attitude in aviation is your angle of approach. Um, this is really useful for me as a songwriter. A lot of my usual thing is sitting down with a guitar and, and and strumming out a tune or a melody or something like that. But it doesn't always work. So I change my attitude. I change my angle of approach. I start with a beat. Um, uh, a great example of uh, a changing changing your attitude, changing angle of approach. When "Stuck Like Glue" was written, I wrote it with a guy named Shy Carter out in Los Angeles, and we were like, "All right, let's today let's write uh, Hey Soul Sister meets Jason Mraz, I'm Yours." That was what we were doing. So I started playing, you know, the chords from "Stuck Like Glue," and nothing was happening. So Shy Carter decided to change his angle of approach and went outside to, as he said, "Yo, Kevin, I'm gonna get some herbal inspiration." I don't suggest or promote that type of change in your attitude, but what, what I did when he came back in, he was like, he said, yeah, put some auto-tune uh, on my vocal track. So, I, you know, we all know what vo you know, auto-tune is, it, it changes. You put, uh, put it on a vocal track, put it in the key of the song, and anything you sing gets popped into a third or a fifth or whatever. It's a great tool, it's a great way to change your angle of approach to get a song. That's how we got the chorus to Stuck Like Glue. There you go. T-Pain was in the house with the country number one. Uh, the fourth thing that, uh, that I do um, to stay creative, stay inspired, is I call it uh, leaving your comfort zone. Um, all the time, uh, I like changing where I write songs, you know. If I'm on Music Row, that's fun. It's always kind of challenging when you hear another song being written. But, um, you know, I'll be in my studio. I'll go outside. You know, I change... I change um, my surroundings. I've always kind of found that when things are in flux, when I'm a little off balance, that that's when the creatures start flowing. Um, I wrote a song with James Blunt uh, in his villa in Ibiza um, a couple years ago, and I'll never forget it because uh, James was hard to pin down in between late nights um, with David Guetta. Um, and so one morning we were um, we were in his day room, and uh, and trying to write a song, and Atlantic Records had paid for me to, to fly to Ibiza first class, and James was not in the mood to write a song. So I was trying to play a song uh, while a couple of girls were passed out on his day bed, and James was, couldn't be bothered. So I was, I was singing this song, and, and suffice to say, with, his, uh, with the help of Grigori, his uh, Russian kitchen mate, uh, chiming in lyrics, and he got a third of the song. We wrote a song called um, I'll Be Your Man, which was number one in many territories uh, and continues to put bread on the table for Kevin and his family. Uh, the fifth, wow, this is going fast. The fifth tool, um, and I think it's the most important thing um, for me in songwriting and staying uh, nimble and creative is I call it Dare to be Stupid. Um, 
and it's 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 working and being in a in a space where there's no wrong answer. If you've ever been a, if you ever been in a songwriting session where you're kind of intimidated, like you're sit, you're in there with uh, Rodney Clawson or somebody like that, you know, one of these guys who's got 20 number ones, and you start getting self-conscious, you're not going to write a good song. Um, but it's the guy like say J.T. Harding who has no filter at all. Do you guys know J.T. Harding? Anybody? JT's on the top of this game because the guy dares to be stupid at every moment. Um, and, and I mean that with, with the most respect because he, he's not self-conscious at all. And when I do that, when I throw the craziest lyrical idea or vocal change or beat or keyboard patch into a song, that's when I get something that goes outside the mold. And, uh, you know, there's, there's really nothing that could be more daring to be stupid than... Um, Oh, I realize I didn't change any of these, did I? Okay. That's a, uh, a beautiful shot right there. Primitive art right there. Let's see. I believe that children are our future. <laughs> Pilgrimage Music Festival. Um, thank you very much. It's September 24th, 25th this year. We've got Beck, we've got Hall & Oates, Casey Musgraves, Grace Potter, Violent Femmes, Better Than Ezra, Cake. Margaret Price to name a few. But this is an example of, uh, the paramount example for me of daring to be stupid. I ran out in Thanksgiving of 2013 and I saw uh, Harlandsdale Farm. Uh, the sun came out from behind clouds and I promptly ran home and told my wife we're starting a music festival. I had no idea what putting a $4.2 million music festival really meant. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and it, but, but what, it, what it meant was collaborating. I surrounded myself with two amazing partners, amazing production people, amazing logistics people, the best talent booker in the business. It meant filling the well. It meant learning about the business, realizing what I don't know. It meant changing my attitude when a certain, a certain approach didn't work to booking an artist or something like that we did something else. It meant leaving my comfort zone. Putting on a music festival is leaving your comfort zone. And it meant daring to be stupid, coming up with different ideas all the time. So if I could say anything is uh, continue to be creative. Don't take no for an answer. There's a million no's in this business. As a songwriter, it takes one yes. Never get cynical. It's the kiss of death as a songwriter, as a creative person. Keep, when a song doesn't happen, keep moving forward. And if talent is the bottom line, which I believe it is, if you're here in Nashville, you will get your chance, not once, not twice, but many, many times. Thank you so much. How about a quick question for Kevin? Anybody got one question for Kevin Griffin? Right here in the front. Belt it out, please. Who's Ezra? How are you better than him? <laughs> There's one in every room in there. Ezra, you mother, I'm getting you. Uh, I, I will talk about it afterwards. Um. All right, Kevin, don't run away. We're going to give away a couple of tickets to that awesome festival. Woo! Once again, somebody out there has been tweeting so much his fingers must be blistered or bleeding. Is Brian O'Shea in the room? Where's Brian O'Shea? I got two tickets. You and your lovely. Go, Brian. Hall of Oates, weekend. Jason Isbell, Casey Musgraves, The Arks, Beck. Violent Femmes. Hey, brother. Shaky Graves. It's an amazing job on your lineup, man. Collaboration, brother. And better than Ezra. Yes. They're, they're, they're making him play, so it's going to be a lot of fun.